yells that at me recording in progress <laughs> my favorite part <laughs> wakes you up all the time <laughs> get you going well i will not lie to you this was my favorite one of my favorite films of last year i was in the room at con when this premiered so i am so thrilled to be oh. speaking with both of you honestly i i'm so excited for this interview <laughs> oh amazing oh, so, so cool that you were there yes. yeah i i mean I, I i first just wanted to start with that i mean I know how exciting it is to be in those theaters and to see these films for the first time, but I cannot even imagine the the joy and pride that you must be filled with and beaming with when you can finally release a project into the world. Can you tell me a little bit about that that moment back in back in Cannes? I mean, I didn't feel joy and pride, but maybe Mia did. <laughs> <laughs> about deep anxiety that's true that's, that's, that's up until the brilliant. night before molly was like do you think people are gonna like it <laughs> i was really I stressed yeah i honestly that moment at like the standing ovation at the end like that is one moment like that will never fail to just fill me with like goosebumps it was incredible it was the most like out of body something that you can't even dream up it was like that it was just it was just wow yeah I remember one key moment which is when Thierry walked in and because we were like watching the front and all the crew was like in front of us so we were like oh look oh, we made a film kind of thing <laughs> and Thierry came to me and he was like look around you did oh. this and like me and me turned around and it was like this whole cinema that we had I hadn't even thought about what was going on behind us yeah and I was like whoa and that moment will always like yeah, yeah. it's very special I I, just, I, oh. I I can I can imagine it. it is an intimidating crowd and it is a very intimidating space to be in but um you so deserve that applause I mean I was I was beaming when I left that theater because mm -hmm. it was just one of those films that I mean you just nailed the entire experience and I mean I think this is such an incredible cast of actors that you've assembled including yourself Mia who I'm so happy with all of the beautiful praise that you have received but it just Thank seems you. like everything worked perfectly on this film and um, it was just awesome to not knowing that we would be able to chat almost a year later but just an awesome thing to experience for the first time <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much Of course um, I guess kind of going off of that I would love to know the just the whole casting process, um, starting with you, Molly, and then um, hearing with you, Mia, too, about how you created this gorgeous, gorgeous friendship uh, on screen, I'm sure off screen, too, with Lara and uh, Enva as well. Um, but can you tell me a little bit about, I guess, your priorities in terms of really making these three characters work? Yeah, I guess my, for me, it was always about talking like finding Tara's character to be like a non-typical victim that we see on screen, you know, like someone who's full of life and bubbly and energetic and, um, and, and so like read and therefore like redefining what we know as like a victim. Um, so when we saw Mia's tape, which came in really early in the process, luckily it was like, I was really blown away by the way that she could, be really excitable and funny and loud on the surface. And then underneath there was like so much going on on her eyes. And like, we could tell this story really like amazingly by questioning her facial expressions and what was happening below the surface. And I think such an amazing skill. So yeah, I was really excited to meet Mia. And then when we did, it were like, um, like totally blown away. And then because we cast Mia really early in the process, we managed to, bring her in on the casting process so often oh. like if we liked someone she Mia would come in and screen test and felt quite like laborious at the time but I think what it did was really build that friendship group and like slowly it sort of became who works well with the whole group and it got bigger and bigger and bigger and also you know like we've often talked about how Tara's character was able to develop through that process because we could figure out what would work for her and what wouldn't and yeah, it was it was quite a magical process that I don't think we kind of knew how magical it was at the time. Mm. Yeah, for me, I think um, that that casting process was like, well, like the best casting process I've ever been through. It was 
I had the best time. Like I'd turn up to kind of the screen test and Molly and the team would kind of be like, sorry, we brought you in again. I'm like, no, no, I'll come in every day. I love it. <laughs> um, like it's so fun. because like, it. like, Yeah, we got, we got to meet so many amazing actors as well, obviously. And so that gave me the chance as an actor to get to act with so many amazing actors and kind of like Molly said, develop Tara because we were seeing how she kind of would react to different, diff- what different people were giving her. Because obviously a lot of actors would do, would do the scenes in different ways. So it was fun to kind of see how Tara would would respond to different people as well. Um, and it meant kind of I, or we got to kind of work on Tara from, I think, was it maybe like, was it maybe like March time up until when we got to I shoot in earlier. September? Maybe, yeah, maybe earlier, maybe like February. February, March time, like early in the year, up until when we got to shoot in September, we, we I was getting to kind of constantly work on her and uh, try try and try her out and get to play with her in different scenarios. So yeah, it was really, really special, a really great time. I think you can feel that lived in experience uh, when watching the entire film. Um, I, I guess before we really move into more of the meat and bones of the film, um, you know, something that was so, it, it struck me when I first watched the film, but definitely on a rewatch, I got to appreciate it more. And it's something that I related to as well. It's such an interesting relationship between Tara and Skye because um, I don't know why sometimes women, and I have certainly been in this position where we have our friends, but there is just something sometimes like an unsaid, an unspoken tension between us. And it just, you just don't address it for whatever reason. And I feel like that's one of those aspects that is so well seen in this film, both the writing process and the from the acting standpoint and I was wondering if both of you could I guess just talk a little bit about that um whether if you want to dive into your own personal experience with that or just more so that type of uh female relationship and I guess your thoughts on why why we sometimes why we ladies sometimes let ourselves get to that point (laughs) Um, I think for me, that was like one of the first things that really jumped out at me in the script that really, really resonated with me. Um, And I don't know, I think I put it down to at this point, I kind of would declare people as my best friends at this age and then think like, well, then that's it. Like we've said we're best friends, so we have to be forever, you know, and no matter what kind of we throw at each other. And it means you, you... you take a lot of stick from from your supposed friends at this age, I think, and you put up with a lot. And I mean, it was something that me and Lara spoke about quite a lot in depth because it was something that we'd both experienced and wanted to make sure we kind of got right with with the characters. And we have a really beautiful bond off screen. I, I love Lara to pieces. So um, obviously didn't come naturally kind of her having to do these jabs. But yeah, we we really wanted to make sure we got it right. And I think I was always just so surprised that we were, we were so horrible to each other, like Mia said, and, and you know, still took it. And like often it would come in like this jokey form, but actually what was said was just, like really uncomfortable and, um, and, and like life changing in those moments as well, you know, because uh, you're so insecure and trying to figure yourself out anyway. And then to add that friendship dynamic into it can often be quite upsetting. Mm -hmm. I think that's it though I think that's the reason why behind it all really and it's like what we discussed with Sky is like it's all coming from a place of insecurity Mm -hmm. yeah I had been I had been dealing with a friendship breakup a few months uh, prior and so when I saw this I said that's a little too close to home yeah because friendship breakups are so hard as well I think that's that's another thing like they're really underrated I went through a really tough friendship breakup and we were best friends for like 11 years so it was like it was was really tough and I think that's something that people don't realize as well until you've been through it Mm -hmm. um so I definitely wanted to spotlight that because it it is it's just another one of those lived in experiences that I think this film gets so well um but you know obviously the meat and the bones of the film is this loud and vibrant and exciting vacation that is very much muddled by a very very hurt experience that um, Tara has to go through. And I mean, I, I I don't even know how to pose this question, but I mean, what was that like 
in the writing process to have to d dive into something so so intimate and so hurtful and personal in the midst of so much excitement going on around you and uh, everybody trying to live it up. Um, and then Mia as well for yourself, you know, trying to express that uh, on the screen. Yeah, I think for me, you know, it's something that I, I, I was assaulted when I was 16, but like it's something that I've always wanted to talk about. And so I think uh, the fact that it sucks the air out of the room is when you do mention it is something that we need to get over because I don't think we can fully move on as people that have experienced it unless we start discussing it openly and discuss how we change that. So for me, like, it's kind of like a positive thing to talk about it and like to write it in the script was always something that I was like, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this with men. Let's talk about this with everyone. Um, so yeah, I guess it was less upsetting. I mean, yeah, uh, it's been different variations of levels of upset during <laughs> during the process of making and talking about the film. Yeah, I think in terms of kind of putting it on screen, I think to me it was just, you know, I never felt like it was kind of on, like obviously it's Tara's story and I was kind of playing Tara, but it didn't, it felt like we were really all in it together and mm -hmm. it felt like we were all just really passionate about telling this story and had this deep love and care for it. And, you know, everyone was just kind of, like being completely vulnerable and open in, in wanting to wanting to tell this story and, and wanting to get it right. So yeah, I think it was it was just it was it was really special making it to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um I mean I I love a lot of the different details that are amplified through the story in trying to tell your story. Um I mean I noticed the in in one of the club scenes when Tara's by herself uh, you hear the loud, loud music going, but then when you kind of start dissociating, it all kind of, it goes silent. And I love that sound work just to show that inner turmoil that she is thinking through. And then same with these lights. I mean, they get more disorienting as she is kind of, I mean, going back to it and constantly thinking about what just happened. And I, I just love those attention to details. And I'm sure all of that was very much... Uh, either written in the script or things that you had wanted to amplify. Um, it was that definitely the goal, working with all these different craftspeople just to show that more internal? Yeah, definitely. It was like, you know, as the film goes on, you kind of push closer to her face and get more into her headspace and the sound becomes more warped on like how she's feeling and um, the bass kind of becomes like the assault and like re- really traumatize her as the film goes on um but I guess it was also as much as it was like tracking it was like really just responding um to that journey that she goes through so you know it felt right that when we were in the club we would go into her head I don't know it just it was quite like a natural process that we felt out during both writing it and making it mm -hmm. um yeah did you two get moments um, when you filled some of those more, uh, I guess, uh, introspective scenes? Did you two talk about it, maybe make some changes either to the script or discuss, I think the character would maybe approach it this way? Because um, I feel like it does seem like you two just were in such a lockstep throughout this whole process. And I'm wondering if that kind of translated more so as you were uh, just navigating a lot of these different scenes too. Yeah, I think quite a lot. I mean, we got, we had rehearsals before we started as well, where we really kind of went through everything in depth and kind of also got to know each other and get to know the characters really well. But then, yeah, there were there were quite a lot of moments. I remember in particular the scene where Tara's like filming in the bath, filming in the bath, no, the scene, Tara's not filming in the bath, Tara's crying in the bath. <laughs> Molly was doing the film. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think um, I remember I was I was struggling quite to get get there and I think we were kind of figuring out ways that um, like ways of getting there and kind of where Tara was then so we kind of navigated that really well together and I think we ended up coming back to it a different day that felt like and it felt more right when we had kind of figured out or I'd figured out where Tara actually was at that moment mm -hmm.
Um, and I, I mean, I, I have to ask Mia, I, I'm always so impressed by actors who, you know, they don't have to say anything, but their eyes convey what they're feeling and just the, either the lack of energy that they're showing to somebody else, as we see with, with Patty, when um, she is just entirely revolted, I'm going to say by, <laughs> by his presence, by everything that he, um, does I mean I I guess I would just love to know how you get into a character's head such as this and then are able to show those emotions that I think women very easily pick up on I certainly could relate to many of the the responses that you had in in these scenes um I don't know I don't have like a specific process as as such I mean I do like a timeline. I start I start there. I start with the timeline of the film um, because we don't shoot chronologically. So mm. kind of just checking in every scene we're kind of doing to make sure I know, obviously, like where she's at mentally. But I don't really know. I don't know if I have an in. I, I think I just kind of, I don't know. I'm just trying to be a real person, I think. So I'm just, yeah, just trying to be as honest as I can be and be prepared to kind of be vulnerable, I think. Um, I watch a lot of documentaries, so I don't know if it comes mm. from that. I just love, I just love watching people. So it's kind of just, yeah, just trying to be as real, real as possible and not overthink it. I think for me, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of actors have different ways of of doing it and like to break the scenes down and stuff. But for me, I'm just kind of like, I like to kind of just go 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 with it because in real life, that's kind of kind of what you do. You don't plan what you're going to say, what you're going to do. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just kind of do that I think mm -hmm. I don't know it's a bit of a rubbish answer <laughs> no no that's okay I mean I feel like these these characters do feel like real people sometimes you see these characters and they seem so larger than life and you are watching them and you think yeah this is a film character because I don't know somebody who is like this or I mm -hmm. can't necessarily relate to them but I just feel like these three uh young core women that we have in this film they I don't know they just seem like I, I know them from my past and yeah, I yeah. think that, that probably I mean, helps. Yeah, definitely. And it that's all in like, obviously Molly's writing as well. I, I've said like, when I first read the script, it almost felt like I was having a conversation with these people as opposed to sat reading a script because of how how real they all were um, and how natural like Molly's writing was and everything. So mm -hmm. yeah, obviously that, that really helped as well. <laughs> um, I guess to revisit this, this time period where, you know, you're still young and trying to figure out life and you have all these stressors um I know in this film it's post exams so everybody's worried about their future um for both of you was that kind of stressful stressful to have to revisit that time in your life I, I Molly you kind of mentioned obviously the the connections with this story but I guess just overall thinking of yourself as a 16 18 year old is that weird to have to do later on in life a little bit <laughs> I personally didn't really realize the age gap until we started doing interviews after and someone was like you're like 10 years older than Tara and I was like <laughs> I was like what <laughs> <laughs> um, I think when I first we first that started scouting we went to Magaluf and I had quite an out of body experience like I was watching all these teenagers like kissing on the street and like being like oh my god that was me like that is so weird um but it kind of became I think we all like, regressed a bit like I definitely feel like I've kind of like become more of a teenager in the last year <laughs> the angsty teenager Molly back yeah. again <laughs> we definitely new all went back like, we went back to like because people have asked if if we were actually drunk as well and it was like no we just we just all got really excited I think it was that thing of like we all just kind of went back to feeling like we were teenagers again mm -hmm. yeah I um I will admit that I maybe was a little bit more lame as a teenager and <laughs> uh, a bit more shy and quiet so I can't say that I was on big uh, spring break vacations as a lot of my um, friends used to go on but um, and I can't say that I was very attracted to the idea of being hung over all day long but yes you all do a very good job of showing what you <laughs> look like as drunk people so I commend you for that one but it is just I do think it's a very interesting time to revisit as a lot of filmmakers 
I guess kind of do those coming of age films. I wouldn't necessarily group this and label it as a coming of age film, but I do think it is, you know, it's just such a weird transitional period for, for young people. And you think you know everything, but you really don't know everything. And you are, I suppose, learning the world by throwing yourself into the flames every single day with your existence. So it's a, it's a very, I think, I, as I said, I mean, I think this film just captures a lot of experiences really, really beautifully and very groundedly. And so I, I truly commend both of you on on the work that you've shown in this film. <laughs> Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. And I do just want to end on, I mean, um, you've shown this film at a number of different festivals. Um, and now we have a couple of BAFTA nominations. We have a rising star in our presence over here we have <laughs> award wins with the british uh, independent film awards i mean how i guess how do you just kind of uh reflect on this entire period even try to explain what is going on in your lives with this film <laughs> it's hard to no explain words. Yeah. No words. Yeah. I think also because we had such a magical shoot and the process of making the film for me was particularly like magical and cathartic and so um, the awards just feel like this crazy cherry on top of this like amazing cake that we already had you know like for me it had already like healed so much and changed my life in such a way that yeah it feels like a different thing but yeah it's great it's great. It was like the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> well, I just want to thank you again, Molly and Mia, for your time today. I know I've talked your ear off a little bit already. I could speak with you for hours about this film because it <laughs> it truly is wonderful and I'm I'm very happy to be able to revisit it in years to come. And I just want to say congratulations again on everything. Thank you, thank so, you so much. much. Of course, Thank it you. was such a pleasure to meet you both and to speak with you. It's been so great to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See ya.